What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing. Today we're going to 3D print and finish Casey Jones' mask from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Alright, so here we have the 3D printed uh, model of Casey Jones mask from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or TMNT as the kids say it these days now. Actually I think we called it when I was a kid too. I don't remember that. That was a long time ago. Not that long ago. Anyways, this was a super easy mask to print and actually prints like so. Very, very little amount of support needed. You need, I needed some in here in the mouth guard, on the eyes, and just on these back parts here where the straps come through and need it there as well. But it didn't really, I probably got away without it, but I wanted minimal amount of cleanup. So once I pulled that off, X-Acto knife to get off a little bit of extra, and it was done. Cleanup was maybe five minutes, like super duper easy. Then I went ahead and took a sanding block and just kind of roughed it up a little bit. I want to give the primer a little bit better chance to adhere to this. I did it on the front and the back, more on the front though, because that's the part that matters the most. So we're gonna hit this with a primer. Then I'm gonna hit this with a white, uh, just a white plastic spray paint. It's cheap here, or it's cheap quality. It's not cheap in cost though. It's like eight bucks a can. So we're gonna paint that, and then we're gonna see where the distress marks are. Cause this is actually the distressed mask, which you can't tell, or damaged mask, but you can't tell because it's a clear filament. Hopefully after I put on the uh, primer, I'll see where those are at and the white I should see it even more. And then I'll either use some rub and buff again, like I used on the splicer mask. I have uh, silver in that, which I could use on this, or I could just use some black acrylic paint and just kind of dry brush it on there and then wipe it off and just to highlight those uh, parts. I've never done that before on something. I say that in theory because I've watched lots and lots of Punish Prop videos and he makes it look really easy. So I'm kind of hoping I can do that. So come on this journey as I try and finish this mask. Oh, before I forget, uh, print settings. So this is two printers with a 15% infill, uh, four top, four bottom layers. Again, it is printed in this orientation. I found this on Thingiverse and this is printed in Rhino Reel uh, clear PLA or their transparent cl clear PLA. I picked that color because I hate it. I really don't like printing things unless you're printing a vase. And if you're going to do that, use a PTG. It's a much clearer, much, uh, uh, I don't know the proper scientific term for that, but it's clear. It looks better. PLA, not so much. It's more frosted looking. So in something that you're going to print, it really doesn't matter what color you're going to use. I'm going to use a lot of the colors I got from Reiner Wheel who helped out with this video. I'm going to use that for a lot of other projects like I did the, the rubber band gun behind me. But with this, because I'm going to paint it, that's mainly what I'm going to use this clear filament for is when I'm going to do props and I'm going to actually be painting them, which mainly is going to be masks because I don't have an airbrush or anything like that. So I have to rely on spray paints. Uh, anyways, let's get back to actually finishing this. All right, so here it is in its current form. So this is, I actually didn't have any primer, but the white paint went on it pretty good. You can, you can see there are some, uh, now you can actually see there were some problems in the print. Like there's a little bit of a extra layer here. It looks a little fat in there. Kind of on the edges, there's a little bit of uh, wobble there. So that's not great, but you overall, you can't really tell once I do it, but you can really see how it's very, very pivoted, pitted here. And you can see the cracks and everything in it now. Like I said, to be able to see once I actually got it painted white. So now I'm gonna try doing a dark wash that I watched off of Punish Props and see if it actually works. So here goes nothing. All right, so now I'm gonna to try to do what's called, I guess like a dirty wash. And I'm gonna go ahead and use just some cheapo acrylic paint. Uh, they, there is some like flow acrylic paint that you can use, but I don't have any of that. This is what I have on hand. So we're gonna use this and I'm kind of going a little bit off what uh, Bill does over Punish Props. So we're gonna get, put some of it here in a little cup. And then it's already pretty liquidy but we're gonna go ahead and add in some water to it. And we're gonna mix that up. He says to use like an old, old brush, but I don't have that. I just have this one. So we'll see how it ends up going. It's, it's still pretty thick. I really don't know how this is gonna turn out. I do hope it's good. Probably used too much paint is what it comes down to. I think I did. So let me go get some more water. All right, so I've got some water in there. We're just gonna do a little bit of paint this time. Like that, maybe. That eh, looks to be a little better. That's decently watery, I guess. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. 
All right, so I guess we're just gonna go with that one. So what I'm hoping is gonna happen here is that when I put this in, it's gonna stay in the low points and will help me like actuate those points. So we're gonna need another paper towel. I don't have shop towels, so we'll deal with that. Just gonna wet it a little bit here. So we have it. All right. Now let's see what happens. Let's just try it here on this cheekbone piece. So get it all up in there. And then we're going to take this and wipe it down. Makes be a little bit too little bit of paint in there because most of it just comes right off. Yeah, most of that came right off, so we'll add a little bit more paint in here. I don't know if that's the right solution or not, but we're just going to go with it. Because I can. Okay. We'll do multiple coats of it. See, a little bit went in there. So you can see here, you can barely see that. And here, you can see some of it in there. So I'll try some more places and see how this goes. Actually, I'm going to try the thicker on this side. It's very painty. This is a lot thicker. So we'll do this. Make sure we get that in all those nooks and crannies in there. Wipe it out. It seems to do about the same. About the same. Could be that this paint is just too slick, maybe? I don't know. Alright, I'm going to use the higher paint uh, concentrate that I made here. And we're just going to go ahead and have at it. That's not too bad. Actually, with a higher paint. Definitely going to do multiple coats of this. And definitely going to do that. Definitely starting to see those details now. So we can focus on here. Yeah, so definitely starting to see a lot more of those details come out. It's not really sinking into these bigger bits yet. Especially there on the chin there, but up here it did a bit more. So yeah, I'll try to put on a thick again, and um, I'll see how it turns out. All right, so after oh, three coats of the weathering, this is how we look now, and I'm generally happy with the results. I kind of was hoping I to get more into these, but I'm going to try something. So I don't know if this is going to work at all. Clean this brush out as much as I can. I'm going to try just some acrylic. Just some straight up paint. Put you in there. Just a little bit of paint here. And I'm going to try just some paint in this right here. I'm just going to try to potch a little bit in there and see if I can get it just to stay in those low areas. And just immediately wipe off. Oh, that looks better. Yeah, look at that. That really kept it in there. So let's do that with some of these more distress points. Just itty bitty bit. Kind of squash it right in there like that. And that gets the paint to stick a little bit more down in those spaces. I kind of like that. Well, I think that's pretty good. I do think, I do think. Especially for being straight off the print. I mean, there's no, you definitely can see the line through here though, which I'm not too happy about that. But there's not a whole lot of ways to mask that. Oh, there's some more damage on that side there. And it is really, really hard to see 
where the damage is on this mask. And it's very subtle. It's super subtle. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave this just like this. I think it's good. But it is a little bit too shiny. Actually, I'm gonna hit a little more black down in here. The the wash definitely gets you in the right direction, but to fill in these bigger these again these bigger marks definitely need to just go straight paint. And that really adds it in there like that. I think that's pretty good. I think that's distressed and damaged enough. Uh, so now I'm gonna let this dry for here for a few minutes, turn the fan on. I'm gonna take it outside. I'm gonna hit it with a matte uh, clear coat just because I think it's a little too shiny right now. I would like it to be a lot duller. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back for the final presentation of this part. So you saw me working on it and here it is. I think this turned out absolutely fantastic. I'm super happy with the results. I will say it's a little bit darker than what I was hoping. I think I could have done with one less dark wash on here, but yeah, it'll still work out. I did go ahead and hit this with two coats of a matte uh, glo a matte finish, I guess, a sealer. So I ended up finding two different kinds. I had the matte one, which is what I used, and I ended up finding an acrylic high gloss one as well. And again, I did not want this to be glossy at all. I wanted it to be kind of gruff looking as much as I could make it. So, but putting it on, it makes you feel like your Casey. I think it looks truly awesome. And this was very fun to do. Lessons learned from this, slow down the print a little bit. I think that's why I had some of these irregularities and this was printed on the TiVo Tornado in one piece. Would have slowed it down a little bit. Aside from that, I don't really know what else I could have changed. Airbrushing would obviously be a little bit better than doing the dark wash the way it is. Actually using a primer, I didn't have a primer, but it ended up going uh, pretty okay, I think. Overall, I mean, I, honestly, not much I could do more. I do want to do straps. Had a little problem there. The straps I have are only like, mm, they're not even half inch. They're really, really thin straps. And I didn't really have time to go find my wife's sewing machine, break that out, sew those on just to use clips. So I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna order them in like a month or two from now, once they finally come in, I'm gonna design a back plate to kind of go right here and using elastic, using probably one inch elastic straps I think I'm gonna use a little bit of sewing in there, and I'm gonna make it so that I could just grab that back and pull it on, and it will hug the back of my head. Whether I make that contour straight, I don't know how to make a contour item in Fusion 360. That's probably gonna be the biggest hurdle, like waiting for something to come in the mail is not that bad, but learning how to make a contoured piece to a certain sphere, I don't know how to do that. If you have suggestions on tutorials, I would love to see that down below so that I can check that out and learn how to do it. That's it for today's project. I wanna say thank you to Rhino Reel for supplying the filament to do today's project. If you wanna check them out, head down to the video description. There'll be a link to their website and again, check them out. So thanks for tuning in guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Either way, talk in the comments down below. Love to hear from you guys on what you thought about this build. Not really a build, it's just a project. You know, have fun with it. If you guys do want to stay in tune with what's going on, hit that big old subscribe button. Hit the bell icon as well. You get an email notification when I upload new content or I do any live streams. So if you want to support the channel financially on a monthly basis, head below, hit that Patreon link. Donate a dollar or more. I appreciate that. And if you become a patron, you get access to my Patreon feed and you get access to my after show, which I record after almost all my new videos. And again, that money helps me do other projects. This one was assisted by Rhino Real, but other ones, it does help out. Otherwise, help out. There's some one-time links and then there's some affiliate codes and coupon codes down below in the video description. Check those out, a little slice what you buy with those, and then come back here to help me out on the channel. So thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, happy grinning.